What's going on everyone, it's David. Welcome back to the channel. So in this tutorial video, I'm going to be walking you through step one to step done on how to create a website with Mailer Lights. Yes, Mailer Light. So Mailer Light, Mailer Light. <laughs> Mailer Lights is an email autoresponder software that you can use to grow an email list. It's kind of a competitor to say like ConvertKit and Aweber, et cetera, but it's a very nice low priced option for consumers. Now, Mailer Lite comes with a lot of different features. Primarily, they have their own dedicated website builder, which I think is really unique and creative because most, most other email autoresponder company software, whatever you want to call it, they come with their own like landing page templates and you get that with Mailer Lite, but Mailer Lite goes full blown website builder where you can actually blog and integrate all your forms, forms, etc. And so it becomes a very creative, interesting all in one solution. If you're looking to create a website and grow an email list, etc. So if you're ready, let's get started. Welcome to my laptop. Let's begin. So this is MillerLite.com and you can sign up for free, completely free. And you also can get a free 14 day trial of all their premium features. So you can follow along with this tutorial uh, with no issue whatsoever. So let's just take a quick look at their pricing plans. And so one to 1000 subscribers is free one to 1000, but their uh, first level paid plan is $10. And that unlocks all these specific features, features like, for example, creating multiple websites and being able to set up a custom domain name with each website. That's a premium feature. So you will have to pay if you want to do that, but you can still follow along with this tutorial with no issue uh, using the free plan. Then when you make, when you're ready, you can go ahead and uh, upgrade your accounts. Now, once you log in, this is what Mailer Lite looks like. You will have to go through a process to verify your account. You have to verify your website. You have to tell them what types of emails you're going to be sending, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, just, you have to finish that before you can continue with, <laughs> you have to do that before you can continue on with the tutorial, okay? It's a standard process of every email marketing provider. They wanna know what kind of emails you're gonna send and where, uh, what kind of content you're going to send, etc. And then once you submit all that information, they will uh, approve or deny your account. Uh, my experience that within an hour of submitting everything, they should approve your account. So here I am, like your account is uh, approved. You can access your account and start sending emails, etc. cetera. Uh, only reason is because they wanna just protect their uh, systems from spam purposes. Uh, so they don't want like anyone signing up and sending bad emails about specific topics that are not allowed. So they just wanna, they, it's just a quick little vetting process. So to continue along, just make sure you knock that out, submit all your required information to get your account approved and we'll continue. All right, so now we have to create a website and start a blog and to do that, it's very easy. You just navigate up top here where it says sites and just go ahead and click on that. And now you can create a website. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now give a website its name. So it says exactly what it says. Uh, don't worry, you can change it later so it's not a big deal. So I'll just go ahead and put in Edge of David, which is actually name of my personal blog. So I'll just click save and continue. Okay, so now we have to select our subscriber group, which is why I said before you have to go through that vetting process, which is very quick, but just make sure to do it because you have to select uh, what email list you're going to be emailing to. So I only have one, which is Website Creator Pro, which is my test account. So I'll click on save and continue. Okay, and so this section is where we can choose the template that we want to use to design our site and use their website builder. Uh, they have a lot of different options. Uh, to be honest, you don't have that much control over the look and feel of your site, to be honest. Uh, I think it's a weakness, and I do find that their builder is a bit clunky, but I'm gonna just show you everything that you need to know. That's just my personal opinion. Again, like this is not a sponsored video. I'm just giving it to you straight about my experience using Miller White in this regard. Uh, anyways, I personally really like this one the most. Uh, it's clean and white, and it makes for a good basic blogging template where you have a nice blog and you can have a nice simple homepage where you can get uh, collect emails quickly and easily. So let me go ahead and collect select. Okay, so now it's loading and this will take some time. This normally would take a few minutes. So just sit back and relax, go get a cup of coffee, come back in like a minute or two and your website should be up and ready. Welcome to our website. So this is Miller Light and this is their website builder. To be honest, to just to be straight with you, I do find that their website builder is a bit clunky and you are lacking in specific customizations that you would expect to have. So for example, like we can take a look at this section. So any template is going to be like this. You're like, well, how do I make this red? How do I change? Like you can't. 
Like you can change the image, for example, over here by clicking the pencil icon, and then you can click on the image over here to update it. But specific things like being able to change like basic colors, really clunky in that like you couldn't do that. And so personally, that's why I like this very first template because it is the cleanest and most minimalistic and I think you can make a nice looking uh, website. So anyways, now look at this. How do I navigate back to where I was? You have to click on this little icon right here that says cancel. Now, if I want to change the logo, for example, like here's this book, okay? I don't wanna say book, I wanna say Edge of David. That's the site, that's the name of the site. We click the pencil icon right there. And how would you assume to change it? You'd think like, oh, well, this is the image right here, so I wanna edit the image, right? <laughs> no, you're wrong. There's a bunch of filters and then a bunch of black space area. It's like, where am I? What is going on? That's what I'm saying, like, it's just a, a little clunky. Could be a little bit more intuitive. So anyways, to change the logo, we click that. Now, I've already done, gone ahead and uploaded this logo, but you could just drag and drop or click this upload image button. Very intuitive in that regard. And so just upload like your logo of choice. Uh, we'll click on select. And there we go. Okay, so now I have a nice image uploaded, but it is a little blown out and a little fuzzy because this image is just like, it's not that big. And so it's being blown out because the website's making it appear uh, bigger than the actual file size. So like, how do you change that? And so you're like, oh, what do I click on? What do I, <laughs> you have to click on settings. And then you actually have to click on this random little icon, just this tiny little circle right here. It's so strange. Like, I don't know why they set up like that. Then we have to click on the minus sign right there. And then I can adjust this to be a more appropriate size, uh, which is, do to 40 that looks beautiful that looks clean and sharp the way the edge of david logo should look i'll click on save and then i'll click on save right there okay so now we can start adding in some blocks so personally i don't like this red gray section right here and so if i click on the trash can it deletes the entire section <laughs> so you got to be careful uh, to go back to make any if you make a mistake you can always click on this icon right here and then go back to uh, different changes that you just made if you didn't if you made a mistake or you just want to go back okay so if you accidentally delete something you're like oops I wish I didn't delete that just click up top there and then click the most recent change and it'll reload which you had previously okay so now you notice two things right here there's a ton of white space you're like why is there so much white space like, like these are two items next to each other like what what happens if i click this and it's like i need to move that up top there okay so i like that you can drag and drop but then you're like why is there so much white space how do i fix that easy you have to click on the pencil icon right there once you do that you have to go into your settings, okay? And your settings is where you gets you you have that granular detail control over the way each block item you add, uh, you know, looks and feels. And so, for example, we have top spacing and bottom spacing. So I can reduce that bottom spacing. I can reduce the top spacing, like this. Okay, let me just navigate there. Okay, and so let's click on save. And then you have to do the same thing for any other element that you have. So again, click the pencil icon. And then we're in the settings tab right here. So I can just reduce the top spacing and the bottom spacing if I want to, for example, we'll just delete that and I'll click on save. Okay, so there we go. Now, if you're like, why is there a space bar here like this? It's because the text is too long. <laughs> this is what I mean by it's just a little clunky, like weird things like that. And it could, this can only be one sentence right here if you're gonna go with this template. So it's like, I do like find your edge enjoy life there we go it's my tagline for my personal blog so i can just delete that and so there we go okay so now we have a bunch of blocks over here and i can start adding and deleting blocks as i want so let me just go ahead and delete this block okay now if i want to add blocks it's very easy i can just click on this plus icon right here and then i have a bunch of different items that i can click over here to add different items if i want or you can just click over here and just drag and drop. <laughs> so I, I like that, but that's what I mean. Like, it's just strange. Cause like, why would you click this? And then, I mean, I guess it's nice to have two options, but again, it's just, just a lot easier to uh, just drag and drop blocks into place. So for example, here is a divider. So we'll add this divider right there. Okay, and so like, I don't like that it's a line. How do you change things within Miller Lights? This website builder, very easy. Again, always click the pencil icon. 
once you click the pencil icon, here is where you have all your details. Okay, so this is your options. These are the only options that you have control over. And so you can change your divider to be different look and feel about how you want it. So if I want that, okay. If I want it to be a bigger, heavier font size, I could do that, okay. Or we could have it squares, whatever. Uh, double line, whatever. And that's how you change things. So if I want to have that have a little bit more spacing between this, I could do that. And so I'll just leave it as this, uh, I'll leave it as this dotted line and let's just reduce the font size for that. Okay, so I'll just leave it like that. And so I'll click on save and there you go. And so that's really it. So you just go through all the blocks and play around with the ones that you like the and, and then just get a look and feel for each item. So for example, we'll have an image. Okay, let me go ahead and drag and drop an image in place. Okay, and so I wanna add an image. Well, we click on add an image icon. And then again, we don't go, we click on the image icon over here and then I can just click on this image that I've added. Okay, so we'll click on the little check mark. I'll click on select. And the image should populate as appropriate. Okay, there we go. Now it's again, it's a little blown out and a little fuzzy. So we'll go to settings and we can just change it to like a medium width or super or narrow, whatever we want to do. Uh, and I'll just, I'll leave it like that. I think that looks nice. So I'll move that there and then save that. And I'll move this up top there. Okay, then so we can, people can open up the site. They have this like little image here. And then we have this email opt-in form. Uh, and this, I really like the way that this form is set up. So I wouldn't really change too much. And so like I would leave, I personally would kind of do something like this. If I was to use MailerLite, I would really, I would keep a, a homepage like this and keep it as dead simple as possible. Like I'd either add an image of myself or a beautiful image that re that relates to like what your the site is going to be about, et cetera. And then just create copy that's compelling that would get people to sign up. People don't want to subscribe to updates. Get something like exclusive content, like a, a free email series on how to do X, Y, Z, whatever go that route. And that's really how you can just set up the, this section right here. So you just, again, just drag and drop things into place over here with your different pieces, with your different pieces, <laughs> with your different blocks. <laughs> okay. And, and it's really that simple. And so let's come over here to the footer. And this is the last section we'll uh, briefly cover. So here again, I want to update the logo there. So it's like, I'll click on that. And then again, we'll click select the logo. Okay. Oh, that looks wonderful. Okay. And so here we can just add in text as we need it and we can link to different things. And so, you know, if I want, I don't need an address. I would say like, uh, you know, copyright, copyright, uh, copyright 20, whatever the date is that you're watching this, uh, and just leave it at that copyright. And then, or I'll just have copyright edge of David. Okay. And then, you know, you can go ahead and then, well, you know, I could link to terms, then privacy, and then, uh, you know, whatever, whatever else I want to have. I want to have contact. Okay. Whatever, whatever you want to do, like terms, privacy, about contact. I would just go ahead and create like specific links like this. Then when you create those pages within MailerLite, then you can just hyperlink it as appropriate to whatever you want. And then over here, we have your social settings. So you can just add and delete the ones that you like or actually use and just use the drop down there, et cetera. And that is, and that's it. So that's how you can like quickly and easily change the footer. And so if I want to change this background image, uh, we'll change this and I'll just select black or white or gray, whatever we want, make it a little bit more stylish, whatever we want to do. Uh, it's that easy. And that's kind of like what I would do in terms of setting up uh, the website's homepage. Okay, so my MailerLite website builder has frozen. And this is what I mean by it's kind of clunky. Like I've all I did, all I did was go to pages and add blog and I click save. And I've just been waiting, <laughs> I've been waiting for it to add. It hasn't worked. I may have to uh, delete and restart the entire site. Okay, so I had to completely <laughs> delete and redesign the website from scratch. Again, that's why I was saying before that this uh, website builder is a little clunky, just things don't work. Now, anyways, if you're going to use this template, do not delete the blog as I did previously because I thought that I could just come down here and click create new. And as I do that, there should be an option for blog because with other templates, there is an option to just add in the blog right from here. But this specific template, you can't. So if you delete the blog here, good luck. <laughs> so that's it. So anyways, let's click on the pencil icon and take a look. 
Now, in terms of this design, looks fantastic. I think the blog looks great. So we have our categories up top there, okay? And then we have our specific blog post. Now this is just a demo, but like when you actually start publishing content, it will populate this section automatically with no issue. And then you can have this top section be set up to be a call to action, email opt-in form, uh, whatever you wanna do, or you can just delete it all together, et cetera. So anyways, if I come over here and wanna edit this section, we click the pencil icon. And again, you can change the items per row, items per page, et cetera. And then if we click on settings, this is where we can change the spacing. We can change the background color to different things. Like if we want, say like a nice green instead, uh, card space, we want large, we want normal, whatever, okay? And that is really it. So it's quick and easy. You can just jump in here and play around with the settings, but you, you have minimal control again. Anyways, let's click on save. Now, how do I add a blog post? You're gonna be thinking like, well, what do I do? Like, do I, I create new and then I add a page and I make it a page that's like a child page or the blog page or like, right? What? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a little bit more confusing. You actually have to publish your site. You have to save and publish <laughs> the website so you can actually start blogging. Okay, so now here we are in our settings section of the site. So this is website setting and our website URL is right here. Now, if you want to set up a custom domain name, which I'll get to later in the video, you would just come down here from the drop down, and then you would select custom domain name, but you have to upgrade your plan in order to do that. Favicon is the icon right there to change that. Again, you need to upgrade your plan. And then you have these settings. And so you have your SEO settings and social share settings. So page title, page keywords, and page Page description so this is important this is what you want to pay attention to so like what is the title for the home page and what's the description for the home page so if we take a look at websites creative website creative pro.com okay so this is the title of the site right here uh, and so that would be right here with the page title and then we have this little description right here okay and with that would go right there with page description okay and next a huge thing <laughs> allow search engines to index this website so funny that that's not automatically checked it's just a little just a little dial at the bottom that you could completely skip over but make sure <laughs> allow search engines to index your website okay next you want to click on save and continue Okay, so now we're all set. So now we have the base settings of our site set up. Now to begin blogging, you have to click on the blog icon uh, on the next page right here. Okay, so now this is our blog and you have two options. You have create posts or manage categories. I definitely recommend jumping into manage categories first. It makes everything easier. And so right here is where you wanna start adding your categories. So you should already kind of think about what categories you want to add. So I'll just add a category and call it, uh, we'll call it domain names, okay? And I'll click on create. Now, once I've clicked create, now it gives me more details for this specific category page. So the category title is the main name, slug is this, SEO settings, again, this is the SEO settings for this specific uh, you know, category page. So for example, if we just, let me just open up website creativepro.com and let me go up here to Google Sites tutorial. Now, what you're able to do is see, like I have a category on this site called make a website. So it's category, make a website boom and then i have a specific description for this category uh you can do the same with mail right for each category you add and this is where you would do it here and again allow search engines to index your category pages okay so you just want to go ahead and click on save and you are good to go okay so now we have one category set now you're like okay i want to add a blog post how do i do that i don't where's the blog post button i don't see it <laughs> this is what i'm saying it's so funny these little details they they just kind of skipped over you have to click on blog again. And once you click on blog again, then it navigates you back to where you were, which now you can create a post. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So create a post, uh, how to register a domain name. We'll call this post this. We'll click on create and let's see where it takes us. Okay, so now we have post details and social SEO and social share. Okay, so our post title is right here. We can't change the URL structure, which I don't like. It's M3V6V, how to register a domain name. Kind of clunky uh, the way that's set up. Now the excerpt is for search engines and as well as what will be appearing on your website. And so just give it like two or three sentences per blog post that you create. 
and next you want to have the featured image so let me just navigate back to let me navigate to my blog okay so what they're talking about when they say uh, excerpt for example on the blog I don't use excerpts this is just the title of each blog post right here excerpt would be like a little bit of text that goes along with the, the piece of content I don't like that I just like having the titles uh, so it's really up to you but uh, you know it's again that's just again like it's up to you uh, you know whether or not you want to add that featured image very very important so like this is a feature image each one of these items and so you know to add a feature image you just click it and then drag and drop into place and then right here this is why you want to add your categories before because your categories will appear here and now you can quickly and easily select what category you want to uh, have your piece of content under okay next let's click on next content all right, so now it's time to start blogging with Miller Lite. So what do we do? So first things first is you want to click this plus sign. You want to add text. All right, so now we have our text here, and now we can start adding in uh, whatever content we want. So uh, let me just open this one up, and we'll just take we'll just take this right here. We copy and paste this. And we'll paste this piece of content in right there. Okay, so that there you go. It's really that simple about how to just add in text as you want. Now, if you want to change something to say like a subtitle, let me subtitle. So we want to add this as a subtitle. Okay, you're clicking it. You're like, I don't get it. Let me click the plus sign. Like, how do I make this an H2 tag? I don't get it. It's like, you have to highlight it. <laughs> why? I don't know why it's designed like that. You can't just click it, you actually have to highlight the piece of text that you want to uh, change. So here we come to format, then we can change the uh, H2, then we can bold it. Uh, so that's how it works like that, okay? And so let me just click on bold, let me click on that. There we go, bold. There we go, so that's how we add a subtitle. Now right down here, we can start adding in more pieces of content as we want. So you can add in your paragraphs, you can add in your H2, H3 tags as appropriate. And so let's click on plus and then we have a bunch of other helpful things here primarily what you're going to want to pay attention to is uh, being able to add video and you want to be able to add images so we click on image and then again self-explanatory where to add an image just click the image icon here and then you click on again just like the logo click on this and then this loads up we'll click here click select and then you know it'll automatically populate this area right here and that's it. And so we click on save and then let me go ahead and click on the plus sign right there. Okay. And so again, I want to add text underneath that. And so we can copy and paste in our text again. So now we have more content. Now, if I want to add a video again, we go here to the plus sign, go here to the video. Okay. Now we can, how do we edit the video? Like I want to click it. It's not working. I don't get again, got to come up to these little tiny dots. Then you got to navigate right to where the pencil is. Click the pencil. Now you can add in the source. So this is YouTube, link to a URL. All right, so let's just do that quickly. All right, so YouTube, and let's just take a video. Any old video is fine. Okay, so Linus Tech Tips, that's fine. We've come a long way. I'll take this URL. All right, let's come back here and copy, paste this in. All right, let's submit, and there we go. So that's looking good. All right, and next, let's add in an email opt-in form. So let's go here, and now we can add in a sign-up form for our email list, and there we go, okay? And so let's click on the little detail icon and then go to the pencil again. And right over here, you have a bunch of different helpful settings. So you can include media if you want, display media next to the left or right. You can include text if you want. You can have the form and you can have the different elements that happen when people successfully subscribe, if they're directed somewhere. So like success message or they're redirected to a thank you page, however you want to set that up. Settings over here, so you can change the settings in terms of like the spacing to give it a little bit more breathing room. You can change the heading, you can change the uh, call to action button a little bit. So if I wanna change the color and make this like a nice lime green, whatever, quickly and easily to adapt and change things as you need it. Click save, and then that is it. It's really that simple. And so you can create a nice looking effective blog post where you can quickly and easily integrate your MailChimp forms into your blog post. When you're done, all you have to do is click save and publish. And voila, we've successfully created a blog post with Miller Lite.
All right, so now I would just want to cover briefly how you would navigate to the blog section in your Mailer Lite account. Now, up top here, you see these helpful breadcrumbs, and they're really useful for navigating to the different sections of your site. But unfortunately, like when you log into your Mailer Lite account, you're going to be looking at something like this. And so again, you're going to have to click on sites, then you're going to have to click on edit. Once you've waited a minute for your site to load, then you have to click again, save and update. And now you can finally navigate quickly and easily back to the blog section. So again, it's a little bit confusing to get to the blog part of your website quickly and easily. I wish they would just add in a quicker, just an easier way to navigate here without having to do all those various steps. But anyways, once you have your blog and your website set up and you want to blog on a regular basis, that's the process you're going to need to do every time you want to get log into your site and create blog posts. Okay, so my final thoughts on Mailer Lite is that I still really like Mailer Lite and recommend them for anyone who has a specific niche website where you just want to collect emails and then send out emails and the link back to your, like your related blog posts or any type of YouTube video you have uh, sent out and already published, etc. It's it's really ideal for simple email marketing like that where you can set up a great landing page. You have automations, pop-ups, email campaigns, all that good stuff is incorporated, uh, and the landing page feature is really good uh, but they're not really that great when it comes to the whole blogging and creating a website aspect it's just still a little bit clunky I hope they improve it over time but MailerWay is still a company that provides a tremendous amount of value for the price I mean you get a free account where you get 1 to 1,000 subscribers and 12,000 emails a month free forever as they emphasize and then their unlimited plan with 1 to 1,000 which means you can send unlimited emails and it only costs $10 and you get all the features of Miller Lite for just $10. So I still think that's tremendous value uh, compared to the competition. All right, that's it for this tutorial video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, hit that like button, follow me on Facebook, hit the bell icon, check the links in the description, explore the channel. <laughs> all right, everybody, I'll leave it there. Uh, again, seriously, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you being here and have a great day. Bye-bye.